type of lecture today is a little bit um, less fun. <laughs> it is um, the result of my studies over the last uh, couple of months since we closed Conscious. I have been um, reading quite a bit and uh, put together some thoughts um, in an area that's not my area of expertise. So if I say something and you feel like mm, this is a little funny, uh, it might be very funny indeed. And then I would recommend that you go to the books and study for yourself. Or if I say something that is not correct, uh, you can actually point it out to me and I will uh, continue my research. Um, sometimes it's good to uh, reach out a little outside of your comfort zone. We all have comfort zones and learn new things. And so this is the result of an effort that I'm doing to dig into a new area and new concepts um, for my own uh, uh, sake. So let me ask you this. When you think of empowerment for the new year, if you would say, I want to empower myself for the new year, what comes to your mind? Not right and wrong, just what comes to your mind. Anything? Being responsible, Being responsible for myself. You're a very advanced student. <laughs> Anything else? Take learning more. Learning more? Take action. Taking action. Okay, sure. great. Those are great answers. All right. And what is the great source of power in our lives? God. God. Right? So, um, Marcelo was uh, talking a little bit about it. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry if that happens. Sometimes you put, when you put project things get off uh, place. Um, so when I think of power, I think of God, right? The powerhouse, the power source being God. So I want to be more powerful in the new year. My thought is I want to have a closer relationship with God, a closer connection with God where all the power comes from. So that's this idea. Now, in the preface of the book, Reflecting the Soul, written by Cesar Saiz, he speaks about the spirit, Joana de Angelis, and the psychological series written by her. And he talks about her many lives, many incarnations. He also reveals that this spirit has spent 50 years in the spiritual realm, studying psychology and psychiatry, prior to delivering this body of work to us through the mediumship of Givaldo Pereira Franco. And he speaks about her type of religiosity. Why am I saying this? Because religion is, uh, literally speaking, uh, a means to reconnect with God. So when he defines her religiosity, he says that her religiosity is more about being than believing, and it's more relational than devotional. So the being, which is a huge part, oh, it's right here. So that being should be on the other side, above believing. So her religiosity is more about being than believing, and more about relating than being devotional. That in itself, is the topic we can leave here just thinking about what that means, right? What does that mean? How are we being religious? How do you want to be religious in the new year? How do you seek God in your lives? Do you seek God by external rituals? Do you seek God? How, how do you express your devotion to God if not by relating? So her type of uh, religiosity is, let's invest on being, and let's invest on improving the quality of our relationships. <coughs> because if I am, if I am, if I am more capable of expressing my true essence, and if I'm able to see others for who they are in essence as well, and I can have a better relationship with my brothers and sisters, I will feel God closer to me. I will feel the, feel the expression and the presence of God more strongly within me. Does that make sense to you? So far okay? All right. 
So, in, within this slide, there are many things that we could address. But today's topic, we are going to talk about being more in the year of 2018. What does that mean? To be, to manifest our essence. What does that mean? How do we do that? Because if we can be more, if we can manifest our essence more, then we also will be able to see the essence of our neighbor and our relationships will improve as a result of that. This is why Jesus said to love God above all and to the neighbor as you love yourself. So everything starts by learning to love and of, uh, by manifesting our true essence. Very good. Okay, so we're going to uh, talk about some basic psychological and spiritist concepts that Joana de Angelis presents and that today we have a group of psychologists that study and explain that to us. And I'm being very bold here to go into this area that's not my area of expertise. But <coughs> when we think about being psychologically speaking, uh, the be, the being, has uh, its essence, its core. We can call it the self, we can call it the spirit, right? And we also have what we call the ego. Not so easy to understand. And there are many definitions of ego. For us, the ego is going to be the psychic um, expression that exists to uh, allow a relationship of the essence with the external world. People were coming in, some people look at the ones that were coming in. So let me repeat this. I myself had to. This is a very difficult concept. So, the ego is a psychic entity, it's immaterial, just like the essence is. Okay? It's a psychic entity that exists to serve the essence. It is something, it's a psychic instance that exists to allow a relationship between the spirit, which is the essence, and the external world. So the ego is neutral. And the reason why I say that is a lot of times the problem is the ego. The ego is not a problem. The ego is something that we built on the course of many incarnations, and it has a purpose. Okay? So in, when we think of in the realm of reincarnation and incarnation, the ego is the persona, is who we are, how we identify right now in the present moment. Okay? But because we are infant spirits, our ego, it's not evil, but it is still immature, it is disconnected from the essence. It is unaware many times of what is really essential, and it is wounded. So, it is an ego that a lot of times becomes a little bit dysfunctional. And it forgets, it does not understand what is its real role. The role of the ego is to be this bridge, is to be a management, is to help the persona to grow and the self to manifest itself more uh, broadly. So, when we relate in our relationships, what happens is this persona, which is driven by this ego that is immature and is disconnected, is the one who is relating with all of us. So, we have a lot of problems because most of the times in our relationships, in our daily lives, it's not our true essence who is manifesting, but it is the ego who takes over. The ego is supposed to be a manager, a psychological manager. He thinks that he is the owner of this being here. So he gets confused about its role. And so it creates a lot of problems in our lives. In addition to that, we have this image, that's the image that Freud um, uh, brought up, the image of the iceberg, right? So you see the little red face on top of the iceberg. The little red face is the ego, it is the persona. 
And so the ego looks at the top of the iceberg and he says, well, I know very well this thing. I am in charge. I am in control. But what the ego does not see is the huge block of ice that is underneath the water. And this huge block of ice is what psychology calls the unconscious. Okay? So, this is the basic in which we're going to develop our lecture. So, again, what do we need to remember? Psychologically speaking, we have essence and we have an ego. We also have our conscious, which is what we see, and we have our unconscious, which is all the areas of our being, they are unseen and unknown <coughs> to us, okay? The thing is that the ego believes that he is in control of life. We believe that we're in control. We think that we know what we're doing at any given moment, in any relationship, in most of the situations of our lives. But the reality is that this huge rock, submerged rock, our unconscious, is really what's driving us the majority of the time without our awareness. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about this, um, spend a little bit of time talking about the unconscious because again it's a huge force that affects us, affects our relationships, and we don't know about it. We are unaware about it. So if we want to empower ourselves for the new year, it's important that we understand what is this and how we can get to know this submerged force that has so much power in our lives. So in the book, Existential Conflicts, Joana de Angelis, on the first chapter called Psychological Escapes, she says, although emotions are generated by the self, the physical body expresses <coughs> them. Successive disturbing emotional charges overwhelm the nerves. The nerves inevitably transfer the emotional content that cannot be processed or there is unacceptable to the archives of the unconscious. So, all the experiences, they are too painful, too difficult. All the feelings, they are hard for us to bear. What do we do with them? The central nervous system, being incapable of handling them, drives them to this psychological area called the unconscious. This is good and this is bad. It's good. Actually, it is this way so that we can emotionally survive ourselves. We cannot indeed handle all our dark, darkness, all our wounds, all our pains at once. So we put unconsciously some of this stuff on under the water. Okay? The problem is that, and we're going to see that, there is a force that makes all this content emerge daily as a, as a way of calling our attention to things that we need to address. And so although submerged, this content is constantly influenced our daily lives. All right, so perhaps it's too philosophical. So let's say you had a... a, a an experience of, uh, of uh, loss in your life and you couldn't deal, you couldn't process with that feeling. Now, in your relationships with friends, with your spouse, you're extremely jealous and you cannot trust anyone and you're always afraid you're going to lose and that transpires in all your relationships because that's something that you could not handle and that you had to put under the water, but that continues to resurface in your relationships as it's saying, hello, I'm here. And at some point, you need to look at it. Is that more clear? Okay. 
So when when uh, Paul in letters to Romans he said, "For I do not do the good I want to, but the evil I do not want to do. This I keep doing. Now if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin in me that does it. It is." This is the way that at that time, without psychology, he was telling us exactly the same thing. Now, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I, I, the conscious self that is doing, but it is sin. We call it sin, what today we call the unconscious, the forces of the unconscious, the part of him that he had not yet processed. The part of him that remained dark had power over him. Although he wanted to do it right, he kept doing it wrong. Amazing to take a statement from Paul from to Romans and put it under the light of psychology and spiritism. Now let's look at this quote of Jung. My life is the story of <coughs> self-realization of the unconscious. Everything in the unconscious seeks outward manifestation and the personality too desires to evolve out of its unconscious conditions to experience itself as a whole. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. As I'm studying more and more Juan and reading many different books, I'm falling in love with you. And so this is uh, this Oh yeah. Yeah. I'm saying, yes. Yes, yes, that's right. right. So, so this is precisely the, the, the role of our incarnation. In order to be, we need to have the courage to explore the, the, the realm of the unconscious. If we wanted to be truly happy in our lives, we need to be able to process, to understand, and to meet face forward this uh, content that is ours. And it's within us. And this is what he talks about. To experience itself as a whole. Now this is an, uh, another idea that I would like to highlight. Because uh, traditionally, in religions, uh, many religions, and in spiritualism included, we have uh, thought that the goal was to eliminate the parts of us that we consider to be unacceptable, or we call them uh, limitations, our, our difficulties. And today, we understand with Joanna de Angelis and with the body of uh, work in psychology, that's not about eliminating parts of us, it's about integrating those parts of us. And we're going to talk a little bit about it. So Joanna, in the book, In the Search of the Truth, she says, it's not about being against the imperfections, the inner shadow. It's about identifying it, becoming aware of its existence, and considering part of life. It's part of life, okay? <clears throat> there is a book that's called the upside, of your, the upside of Your Dark Side, and it's written by uh, two psychologists. Uh, their names are, are there. Mm -hmm. And it's a really interesting book because it talks about the upside of the dark side. So it actually tells you that your dark side has an upside. And it gives you a very different interpretation of what we call the negative feelings. It tells you that they have a purpose and they are actually have a positive side. So in the introduction of the book, they tell us, we are putting forward a new way to pursue what is desirable in life. It is not happiness exactly, although it does have the side effect of bringing happiness. It is wholeness. So it goes back with the concept that we were talking previously with Young, which is the concept of wholeness. Empowerment comes from accepting, being aware of where we are, of who we are in that given moment, and embracing it all without judgment, with love, with respect, with acceptance, because <coughs> it is the acceptance, it is this embracing of who we are that will create the space and the opportunity 
for the integration, for those parts to be processed, and for the energy that's being used within uh, conflicts to be used within the construction of something positive in our lives. The biggest challenge of human existence, Joana de Angelis tells us, is to explore this unknown universe, withdrawing from it the potentials that will bring happiness and self-realization. So this is the challenge, okay? So this is also the question that we ask ourselves. So how do we do this? How do we tap into the unconscious? Because the unconscious has traumas, has our experiences from the spiritual perspective, in the unconscious, all our experiences from previous lives, all the experiences from this life that we could not handle have been placed on our unconscious. So experiences, sadness, traumas, everything is in there. Also potentialities are in there. So how can we tap into this reservoir of emotions? Have you ever had the experience of, um, it, has, it happens to me a lot, where I something happens to your life and you feel very sad. You said because of that occurrence. But if you pay attention, sometimes the sadness is a huge sadness that's a little even <coughs> disproportional to the event itself. Why is that? Because life is going to bring many situations where you are going to be experience the same type of pain. So if I lose something now, a person, um, a relationship that ends, a loved one who dies, or whatever that might be, a lot of times when I'm crying, when I'm grieving their loss, I'm grieving their loss, that particular loss, and many other losses that I have had that are uh, tapped into by that particular experience. So you feel overwhelmed as if you will never heal. It is so intense, the feeling, the grief that you undergo. But the reason why is because you're not grieving one loss. You're grieving a multitude of losses a lot of times. Many of them that you thought you had dealt with, but you probably didn't. You really, because who likes, who, let's be honest, who likes to uh, be in pain? Nobody. If you have physical pain, what do you do? I, I have Advil everywhere I go, in my drawer, in my office, in my house. You know, I'm like, why am I going to be feeling pain? Give me those Advils. And I take them and you push the pain away, right? Physical pain. We try to do the same with emotional pain, don't we? What are some of the resources that we use to eliminate emotional pain? Eating? Uh, addictions. <laughs> addictions. Uh, addictions. Uh-uh. What is it? Prayer. 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 Mm-hmm. What else? Exercise. Exercise. Mm-hmm. Work. Workaholics. Right? Shopping. I'm sorry? <laughs> Shopping. Shopping. Shopping is great. Shopping is great. Shopping is super effective. As good as that feels. Shopping is super effective for the moment, right? It's awesome to get a new piece of clothes, right? You become a little poorer too, so it has some side effects. But we're, we're playing, right? But we, we all do that. We all do that. And that works against us. That's what needs to be clear, right? We numb ourselves. And we, 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 we steal from ourselves the opportunity of doing the work that's necessary. So we're a little, um, we're not very courageous, very, let's put it this way, right? But we're also not here to be judgmental. So I think the important thing is we seem all to be aware of what we do, and each one of us needs to see what we can handle and try to be more present with whatever it is that we're feeling because there lies an opportunity for 
tapping into the unconscious. If we take the time to feel, if we let it come up, if we let it manifest, and if we sit with it, it will give us an opportunity of true healing, of true healing. So to be includes love yourself, accept yourself, be curious about your feelings, curious about your experiences. I'm feeling this. What is this about? Where is this coming from? Non-judgmental, because once you judge your feeling, once you say this is good, or, or primarily this is bad, that's it. You create an obstacle between you and the feeling itself. Seek awareness. When Jesus said, watch and pray, he was saying pray, but watch. Watch yourself. Watch your actions and reactions. Watch your feelings. Watch your thoughts. So this way, you can get to know yourself, and you can be, and you can ex express more fully your essence. And pursue integration. Integration of this content that we don't like, we don't want to see, or we truly, truly are unaware of it. So my friend John would say, brilliant lecture, but please tell me, how do I do this? <laughs> right, John? That's true. Correct. So with him in mind, I always ask, add this part to my lectures. How do I do this? <clears throat> All right, so let me read to you this poem by Ronnie. This, let me, uh, don't tell me that the end of it is not here. Is there a way of seeing this light? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So, this being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival. A joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awareness come as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and attend to them all. Even if they are a crowd of souls who violently sweeps your house, emptying it of its furniture. Still, treat each guest honorably. He may be cleaning you out for a new delight. That's an outstanding uh, poem that's uh, on the opening of a book called um, The Present Moment. The Present Moment? The Presence Process. Huh? The Presence pro Process. The Presence Process. It's in the opening of this book. So what is this poem telling us about? It's telling us about that our heart is a hotel, right? And that these feelings, they come up, they are guests. No one pushed them into our, our home, right? They came, they came. They're temporarily living with us. When they are with us, this is what we need to do. No matter if they are a crowd of sorrows, we need to treat each guest honorably. And we need to ask ourselves, how did you come about? What do you mean? What do you mean? What exactly are you doing here? Right? Who are you? Because these are questions that are going to help you to understand who you are and where you are emotionally in that present moment. So the present process, <laughs> a journey to present moment awareness, is where the, this uh, poem is. And on the forward uh, of the, it's on the forward of the book, and it's right after the poem, you have this sentence, acceptance is the doorway to transformation. Okay, so here you have your emotions, I'm going to explain this because it's all messed up. So here are your emotions. The emotions are the messengers, right? So count yourself like you used to shoot the messenger, all right? So don't shoot the messenger. Don't bury your feelings. Don't go <coughs> eating, running, working, and doing all these kinds of stuff. Don't kill it. Don't kill it. Open yourself to the messenger. People in situations, relationships, and all kinds of things that happen in our lives they are the instruments who will, through them, 
we will receive the messages which are our emotions. And a lot of times, we are going to have many positive uh, emotions, but also pain and discomfort uh, and feelings that are difficult for us to, to bear, to withstand. So the ego, who does not like any of those things, and wants to be perfect, and wants to be in charge, and hates the feeling of being out of control, right? He will try some, uh, he will try to escape. And so Joana de Angelis talks about different mechanisms in which we use to escape. Parts of us that we don't <coughs> like or feelings that we don't care for, all right? So here are five of them, but we don't have time. And uh, we're going to talk about three of them. They are compensation, rationalization, projection, introspection, and transference. <clears throat> so, rationalization. So, you have a problem and you rationalize about the problem. You build an entire theory about it, right? So, what does that mean? Maintains distance from the feelings. Creates a theory about conflicts and emotions in order to control that. So, the more you can theorize about Oh, I'm like this because A, B, C, D, or, or you know, whatever you create. We, we're really good at that. We can create very complex theories about why we act and behave in certain ways, why we do what we do, and things like that. <coughs> so, uh, it, it helps to deepen concepts, but it's ineffective to reach the depths of the being and really tap into this unconscious content that we are talking about. So. Don't rationalize. Don't try to explain. Experience feeling instead. This is why Alan Kardec in Genesis says that the intellectual progress is incapable of regenerating humanity. Because intellect alone, without the ability to do the more and the emotional work, it's not sufficient. It's not sufficient. So this shows how Kardec is modern. Right? There's a lot of things that he says that today we look under the light of psychology and we have a better understanding. The other one is denial. I love this. One of the most used strategies of denial in the spiritual movement is the so-called obsession. So when you say, I'm obsessed, you deny that you have a problem because the obsessor is the problem. So it goes to Sandra's uh, take on empowerment. We must take responsibility. We must take responsibility. It's very easy, very easy to put the blame on our brothers that we call our obsessors, right? So when people come for fraternal counseling, one of the things that we attempt to do, the person comes and tells me, I have a problem. There is a problem in my life. Part of the solution is for you to understand that you are part of the problem. Always. Always, inevitably. And if you understand that, you empower now to solve at least the part that you can, which is yours. In any problem that we experience in our, in our lives, we would love to think that it's outside of us and belongs to the people who are causing it. But we are always part of the equation. So empowerment is to understand that in the obsessive process, obsessive process, you are part of the problem. And so you can't deny that, because by denying that, you also uh, deny yourself a chance of, uh, of growth. In projection, projection is this natural and morbid tendency, according to Joana de Angelis, of human beings to ignore certain limitations and to project them onto others. Every time a person fights the, 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 that character trait of someone else, this person is projecting himself on other. He's transferring outwards what the ego does not want to recognize as a limitation, a dark area that belongs to himself. It turns its victim into the mirror that unconsciously reflects himself. Okay? So pay attention. The person that you call your enemy, the person that you have the difficult time getting along with, 
the person that challenges you probably is the one who is mirroring more perfectly and clearly your own limitations. And that's why you dislike that person so much. That's why. Because the ego cannot admit that those traits are part of themselves, itself. So it's easier to see outside and say, it's myself's problem, obviously. He's the one who is rigid, not me. That's, for me, for instance, rigidity is one of the easiest things that I see in others, because it speaks about my own rigidity. And there is another way in which we escape, which is a lot of times, if someone is not rigid at all, I may find that person, I may criticize that person very much, but deep inside I envy the ability of not being so rigid. I wish I could be that way to some extent, but because I don't believe that I can be, it's easier for me just to criticize the person who does differently. So you see, this is very complex, it's not easy. But those are things that if we start to study and become aware will help to empower us in making our lives better and our lives with all these parents as well. Alright, so coming to an end, we go back to the first slide and I think it becomes a little bit more clear how the investment on being, on the self, on the spirit is so important and so powerful in establishing or re-establishing our connection to God and also to others. Because the more I can understand that I'm not a black and white being, that I'm a complex individual, when I'm dealing with others, I won't just be so rushed to judge and to label my brothers and sisters. Because the more I understand my own limitations and difficulties, as I'm dealing with someone difficult, I will look at that person with empathy. Empathy is a very powerful feeling because it equalizes us all. So I look at the other person with empathy and I have compassion. But to have empathy and compassion towards others, I need to be able to be empathic and compassionate and understanding of my own limitations in first place. So this makes our relationships, it makes us more benevolent towards others, it makes us more indulgent, less rigid, more embracing of other people's imperfections because we understand that they are struggling as much as we are. And I want to close with this concept, which I think is pretty revolutionary for spiritism, okay? And I would like to um, dedicate this lecture, I'm sorry, I get a little emotional, to my wife, whose birthday was yesterday. <coughs> and who um, has always told me about this, and now I can understand a little better. And all the books that I read in preparation were given to me by her. So she's a, a huge part of um, my spiritual growth. So, <coughs> in spiritism, we we used to tackle our unbalanced behaviors, right? So jealousy, anger, hate, selfishness, pride, all those things would say, you can't be jealous, <coughs> you can't be proud, you can't have anger. Now we understand, after all this concept, we understand that these are just symptoms. Symptoms of something much more profound, symptoms of something much more deep. These are warning signs of a deeper problem. So the symptoms should have been here. So these are the unbalanced behaviors and symptoms, warning signs of a deeper problem. And it is a waste of energy to seek to eliminate the behavior without addressing the deepest structure. This is not moral transformation. When we talk about moral transformation, it's not about just eliminating, pushing away, just saying, I'm not going to be jealous anymore. It doesn't work like that. You need to do the work, the self-knowledge work, the understanding of why jealousy is just a symptom of something much deeper within you. We cannot, this is Marlon Heckdahl, he says, we cannot eliminate an imperfection by suppressing it. 
Suppression removes from the awareness, from the ego side, the shadow. Removal of the shadow from the ego side is not moral transformation. The unconscious will continue to manifest in our lives in an attempt to make itself known, propelling human awareness and evolution. So, inner transformation is about tapping into these areas that we have been having a difficult time seeing and feeling, allowing, embracing, understanding, integrating, and transforming it. And one quick example about anger, so that's again not so theoretical. He says, it's one of the most condemned emotions in the religious realm. It can be defined as the product of a wounded ego. The overexcited ego will give itself the right to explode in anger as long as it believes that it cannot be upset, that everyone should think like it does, should la act like it acts in the timeline that it establishes. The ego will not be able to manage anger while it does not understand that it is not the center of everything and while it continues to be constantly adored, which is not sustainable. And why it continues to want to be constantly adored, which is not sustainable. So it's an example. You're angry, okay? So what is anger about? Anger about is this ego, right? The ego that thinks that he's the center of the world. And again, you need to ask yourself, why do I feel this way? Why do I want all this attention? Why? Why? Why do I have to be always like the way I want? And you need to dig deep in yourself to look at your past experiences in this lifetime and see, was there a moment in my lifetime that I felt abandoned, that I felt not seen, that I felt pushed aside, that today I want all this attention and everything must be the way that I want. Otherwise, I'm very angry, I'm very upset. Okay? Rummy again, I'm not this hair, I'm not this skin, I'm the soul that lives within. So be empowered. We'll finish with Jesus when he says, but first, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Seek first his kingdom. Seek first in your lives what is essential. And everything else will come. Thank you. I will, I will open now for any comments. <laughs>